she was the director of a corporation famous for growing cell plants to produce artificial meat. This would be a new step forward for humanity, but it also indirectly cuts off the livelihood of traditional livestock farming organizations. Jai Yu became one of the four most influential people in the country at that time. Her appearance coincided with the deaths of many people in the National Intelligence Service. More importantly, the president lost his legs and be deposed. Chai Woon, a member of NIS couldn't let his comrades die in vain. He applied for a position at her company to find out the schemer. When the whole nation smitten with plague. Chai Yu was one of those who witnessed the authorities destroying those pigs. She threw up seeing it. Not long after, her younger sister returned to the country. Unfortunately, she was infected with the plague. Chai Yu felt wretched when she couldn't help her sick sister, who was suffering from pain. The evil disease caused the death of her sister's brain. After a short time facing the fatal disease, her younger sister passed away. Only Jiayu left in the world. It was also the driving force that motivated Jiayu to become a talented scientist. She always blamed herself for being too late to save her sister's life. If she didn't cremate her sister, she probably would have been able to replace her sister's body parts. Jiayu really missed her sister whom she wanted to give a tight embrace. Trying to live with her pain, Jiayu opened her own company. The powerful biotech company, specialized in producing cultured meat as an alternative to animal meat. The cultured meats produced by BF were exported around the world. It also became a favorite food of consumers around the globe, which reduced pig slaughter and hunting of animals for food can be limited. BF also served food and beverages from A to Z. The greenhouse effect was also reduced to the lowest level as possible. In January 2024, Jiayu took a flight with five leaders of the top corporations and the president. They secretly visited the Onsan battlefield. The president was protected by Captain Chai Woon and other high-ranking officers. The barrack was terrorized when the president arrived. Two people accompanying the president unfortunately passed away on the field, and many other officers lost their lives. Heartbroken Chai Woon wished his comrades could rest in peace. After getting a job at Jiayu's company, Chai Woon visited the former president. The president was still alive but he lost his legs. He lost his position because of it. Chai Woon's mission was to find out the schemer. As it was a secret visit, the former president was sure that the schemer was one of those who were on the same flight with him. Chai Woon had investigated the other three. And no clues were found. Thus, the former president believed it was Jai Yu, CEO of BF. As soon as he became the president, Jai Yu wished him would approve cultured meat. Cultured meat is grown in a lab from a few animal cells, because both the US and France had approved cultured meat. Since he resigned, BF company had grown exponentially, and her company also supported the current president with many things, so he was sure that Jai Yu did illegal things. And he ordered Chai Woon to dig into her company by trying to be her right-hand man. With the former president's help, Chai Woon attended the launch of BF's new products. Thanks to the invitation that the former president took for him, Chai Yu was introducing new products of her company. It was streaming globally. She showed everyone a masterpiece of the BF company for the end of 2025. Seafood meat was successfully cultured by BF. That means eaters no need to worry about mercury in seafood. Chai Yu clearly introduced products to consumers. People no longer need to hunt for seafood. Moreover, she promised that her company would produce lab-grown rice and fruit trees. Humans will no longer destroy nature for food. Next, Kim Singu replaced Jai Yu to speak about the company's new invention, to continue introducing the company's new technology. Jai Yu was escorted out of the company by many bodyguards. Out of the company, there were a lot of people protesting against BF, because their livelihood was blocked. They threw tomatoes at her car. The current situation there was extremely chaotic. A while later, the police appeared to suppress the crowd of protesters. Chai Woon followed after Jai Yu. The police made way for Jai Yu's car to leave the place. At night, Jai Yu's car was stuck in the traffic jam. It was Christmas Eve and it started to pour down. Jai Yu felt sad seeing the jolly of Christmas Eve. She missed her late twin sister. A man fell on a car all of a sudden. Chai Woon went straight to her car. 
He asked the bodyguard not to touch injured Jiayu. Or else her spinal column was seriously damaged. A man with an umbrella observed them for a while then left. Afterwards, Prime Minister Sienna J heard about her accident from his subordinates. That fallen man was a farmer who went bankrupt due to BF. He passed away on the way to the hospital. BF's CEO was the target. Jiayu's neck was injured. She and manager on San watched the video of her accident. Jiayu saw a stranger in the video. Lawyer Heidun visited Jiayu and announced that. The police wanted to see Jiayu's bodyguards that night. Maybe they leaked Jiayu's location to the fallen man. On San asked her to hire another bodyguard. Jiayu asked about the stranger who was present at the scene of the accident. Heidun said he just passed by. The thing was that he knew how to give first aid to an injured person, Jiayu felt like she had met him before. Jiayu was very skeptical about the accidental appearance of this mysterious man. Meantime, Dr. Singu came to the lab of BF. He called assistant Hong to ask about an important file. Dr. Kim discovered that his computer had been encrypted. Assistant Hong also realized that the whole network was hacked. They were blackmailed. Chai Woon turned on his laptop and read an article reported that BF's cultured liquid was full of bacteria. Assistant Hong also reported that they were asked to pay 80 billion bitcoins within the next 48 hours to get back all of the files. Team leader Seo we said that there was no corporations could ever successfully decode this gang's malware. Jiayu wondered whether this gang denounced that her company's cultured liquid was full of bacteria. The lawyer came to the newspaper house to dig into it. She met the manager of the newspaper house. They received the information from an anonymous email. It was also forward to other media experts. That was why he didn't ignore such a hot new. I looked up the IP address of the email sender and it had a link to this place. Lawyer John recognized this was symbol of the Citizens organization. Afterwards, Jiayu and her five key personnel. They tried to find how Citizens hacked their computers. They hacked the lab's internal router to plant malware. The hackers took Bitcoin to cover their true identities. Dr. Kim was very angry when his lifelong research on cultured fluids was defamed by others. Lawyer John believed that hackers did it when they all came to the product launch. Jiayu decided to close the lab for two days and ordered everyone to keep it a secret. Set up a new firewall for the lab. Lawyer John gave Jiayu the profile of the man who appeared at the accident. She remembered meeting him at Sunda Group. He was the bodyguard of Chairman Park but he already quit his job. Returning to her office, Jiayu asked her AI assistant about Citizenks. It was known that the Navy Intelligence Agency was also attacked by the Citizenks in 2022. Chai Wong worked there at that time. Jiayu asked herself if she should stay away from him. The next day, Chai Wong came to BF. An San warmly welcomed him. He took Chai Woon to a virtual room. Chai Woon put on protective gear and a pair of virtual reality glasses. A guy in suit appeared. Chai Woon had a fight in the virtual reality world. Virtual reality technology to test the fighting skills of a scholar. When Chai Woon knocked the rival down, a virtual gun appeared. His reflex ability was being tested. When he passed the test, a virtual car appeared and his driving skill was being tested. And he also easily passed the test. Next, on San interviewed Chai Woon. He asked why Chai Woon left Sunda Group. Chai Woon said President Park didn't need his protection, while Jiayu was in need of someone reliable. In 2019 she was almost attacked during a visit to the North American production branch. In 2024, she was also targeted by an extremist during a Greenpeace meeting. After that, Chai Won asked about the salary if he was accepted as her bodyguard. An San would consider it and told Chai Won to leave. An San reported it to Jai Yu. That Chai Won was a capable and outspoken person, he seemed to be a loyal but disobedient staff. Jai Yu was not sure if he was a trustworthy person or not. Jai Yu needed time to think about it. Lawyer John had two bad news for Jai Yu. First one, C and J wanted to see Jai Yu because of the rumor. And a worse one was this video. A gang in South America offered a reward of $3 million to anyone who can bring her head back to them. 
because they believed you were threatening their business. That organization used to trade flour, but then they cleared forests to make farms and exploiting local people, when she claimed to successfully grow cultured agricultural products within six months, they offered such a reward. Jiayu also seemed quite confused hearing this news, and she asked about Chai Woon who wanted to be her bodyguard. Chai Woon went home and couldn't find his pet cat anymore, realizing someone had broken into his house. He immediately held a knife to defend himself. Chai Woon entered the room and overpowered the intruder. Someone else was fondling his cat. The intruder took over the knife and pushed Chai Woon to the ground. After all, Chai Woon could still knock down the intruder. The leader pointed at Chai Woon's family and said, I know you sent your niece abroad to study. Bring Jai Yu to me. I have something to deal with her. He wanted to buy Chai Woon off with a huge sum of money. Also, he promised to let Chai Woon's family live in peace. Chai Woon grabbed the check and took the chance to grab the intruder's neck. They told Chai Woon to open the door and the lawyer would explain it to him. It was lawyer John who was waiting outside. It was for testing his loyalty. Lawyer John took him to see Jai Yu. She opened the door and let him get in alone. Chai Woon told Jai Yu not to use his family for her test. Then he told her to stay away from the window in case of an ambush. Jai Yu questioned him, why did you show up when they was in need of help? And you even possess all the skills we require. Do you have any purpose? You, a bodyguard, was there when the accident happened. Chai Woon said, I was coming home after BF's event. I escorted a customer there. No other purpose, Jai Yu wondered, when you worked at the Naval Intelligence Department, the organization was also attacked by Citizenks. Did they decrypt the malware or pay for the hackers? Chai Woon said it was confidential information. However, no one succeeded in catching the hackers. Jai Yu showed Chai Woon the current situation at her lab. The hackers did attack the Naval Intelligence Department when he worked there. And they unlocked the files after receiving money. But he wasn't sure if they collected Jai Yu's data. But if they exchange 80 billion bitcoins at once, she would be able to track them down. Jai Yu was sure that they would withdraw money from different exchanges. She wanted to try catching them. So Jai Yu told the lawyer to pay the hackers. After her lawyer transferred bitcoins as requested, the files in BF's lab were unlocked. The AI assistant reminded Jai Yu of an appointment in the next 40 years. Chai Woon escorted her downstairs. Bodyguard Kim drove Jai Yu to the destination. Chai Woon realized he was the model for the virtual test. Chai Woon got in the car to escort Jai Yu to the appointment. Noticing that the files had been unlocked. CEO, we sent a message to the company chat group. On San entered a memorial park. It was raining outside. He visited the funeral of the fallen man. The victim's mother and sister were crying their hearts out. Assistant Hong asked On San out for a talk. On San said he would call her back later. He then left the funeral of the farmer. The man with the umbrella was also present at the funeral. Chai Woon and Kim were waiting outside of Sienna Jay's residence. The young bodyguard bragged about his staff card. He wished to have a card with the blue strap, which referred to the greater power. An San went to the emergency of the hospital. Then the police officer told him that assistant Hong's car plunged into a river due to slippery road. Someone found her and she was still in coma. In the meantime, Jai Yu was seeing Sienna Jay. She told him her lab had been attacked by hackers. Where kept the key technology to dominate the cultured meat market. She believed that the hackers had copied it all. Cryptocurrencies leave traces as soon as an exchange is made. Jai Yu asked Sienna Jay, please help me catch the culprit. You said that BF's reputation will affect the reputation of this country. How will people react if I reveal this attack to the public? You will be the first prime minister in history to find the culprit of a malware scam. The prime minister agreed to help on two conditions. First, BF shall donate money to basic industries. You generously paid 80 billion to the hackers, so you're probably willing to give citizen the same amount of money, right? Second, show the evidence that your cultured meat is safe. That means you must disclose the composition of the liquid in use, 
Xiaoyu refused because she couldn't disclose the key technology. Or else, her company would be closed. She said, I'll prove my cultured meat is safe and donate enough money. In exchange, please have Interpol keep their eyes on the exchanges. The Prime Minister agreed with that. Getting in her car, Jiayu complained that he was such a sly old devil. Jiayu called back to Unsan. He said Assistant Hong was hospitalized. Because her car plunged into the river due to the slippery road, the police would pull the car up on the following day and check the camera. After that, two bodyguards escorted Jiayu back to BF. Chai Wun went upstairs with her. Jiayu realized that the unwantedness related to the lab. The lab was hacked and then the assistant got injured by a car accident. Chai Wun left when Jiayu entered her own room. He went back to his home and turned on his computer. When the computer system of the Naval Intelligence Department was attacked by the Citizenks, he found out that the hackers were from Russia. Next, Jiayu received a call from her lawyer. Chai Wun is waiting for you on the first floor. He can't come up with a staff card. You need to come down, Chai Wun told Jiayu. NIS concluded that Citizen X was a Russian organization. This is the warning sent to his previous workplace, English language but Russian punctuation. It only appears in the Russian language. Other countries rarely use it in writing like this. Let me see the captures. Apparently they only used single marks only use in the Korean language. And there are no characters used in the Russian language at all. Someone posed as be Citizen X to hide their true identity. This schemer is possible someone by your side. Xiaoyu asked her assistant to call Seo Hui to the lab. Team leader Seo Hui immediately came to the lab under request. Xiaoyu analyzed the situation to figure out the fake hacker. Only on San was not present at the product launch event. Dr. Kim also left in the middle of the event. Would he pretend to be angry to hide the truth? Why did Assistant Hung drive too fast at 5 p.m.? Lawyer John was also the first person to know when the bitcoins were transferred. She could also access the lab's intranet. Which one of these five people was the schemer? Seo Hui turned on the CCTV in the lab. Xiaoyu asked her AI assistant to present the positions of the lab's personnel. Being allowed to access the lab's internal network, Seo Hui entered the passcode for the initialization. All the personnel position were presented on the screen. Xiaoyu asked whether any of them bought an airfare to leave South Korea after 4 p.m. this afternoon. Seo Hui entered password to confirm the command. Dr. Kim bought an airfare to America for visiting his son in America after his retirement. Xiaoyu asked whether or not anyone's account received over 10 million or more after 4 p.m. this afternoon. The answer was no one. Xiaoyu asked her AI assistant to notify her. If a big sum of money was transferred to any of them, then she let Seo Hui go home. Yet, she asked Chai Wun to follow after Seo Hui. Because Seo Hui was one of the suspects. Xiaoyu then realized that Seo Hui could not be a blackmailer. Because he could use his IT skill to withdraw money from BF more easily. Xiaoyu thought of what Chai Wun said earlier. He urged her to pay the hackers. She blamed herself for trusting the man whom she first met. She began to research Chai Wun's personal background provided by her AI assistant. She remembered he escorted former president to the battlefield five years ago, when the bombing happened. At that time, Chai Wun gave her a call. Seo Hui went straight home after leaving the laboratory. Chai Yu questioned him, why didn't you tell me about former president Lee? Come back for a talk. Chai Wun went back to BF Company and explained to Jai Yu, I was a soldier who was ordered to escort the president to the battlefield. The bombing happened 30 minutes after the president's arrival. Chai Yu kept questioning, you clearly know I was also there. Why didn't you tell me this? Even Chairman Park of Sunda Group was there too. You were also his bodyguard. That is suspicious. Are you still in contact with former president Lee Mun Gyu? Chai Wun said he met him once after the bombing. Chai Yu turned away. She didn't buy into him. Chai Wun followed her and claimed that. He just learned that she had been there not long ago. Chai Yu said Lee Mun Gyu was a bad president in her eyes. His grandson was current prime minister. So she believed they infiltrated a spy into her company. Chai Wun immediately called former president Lee, 
asking him to let Chai Wun visit a prisoner who was sentenced as the bomber in the battlefield. He said Jiayu Yu doubted him and she might figure it out soon. The former instantly immediately called his grandson, who was the prime minister, and allowed him to let Chai Wun visit the prisoner. Prime Minister tried to dig info out of BF's laboratory. The former president said it was the first day at work of Chai Wun. The police carried out the retrieval of assistant Han's car. Chai Yu was in her car and observed it from afar. Chai Wun also came there for a checkup. The police told him the black box disappeared. So they both drove away. An San announced to Jai Yu and Chai Wun that. The police didn't consider it a car accident. Jai Yu also told him, the schemer may be someone in our company. And impersonating the Citizen X organization, it may have something to do with Assistant Hong's accident. Assistant Hong last called him at 4 p.m. yesterday. Jai Yu asked the AI assistant who stayed closet to Assistant Hong yesterday. It was Mr. Kim who stayed close to her from 4.58 to 5.50. According to his phone's location, he was currently at home. As they couldn't reach Mr. Kim on the phone, they left in hurry. Going back in time at 4 p.m. yesterday, Singu received the notification that Jai Yu just paid the hackers. Assistant Hong heard the professor screaming with joy, which startled her to drop the heap of papers. Mr. Kim saw Assistant Hong standing out of the door. He then opened the door and Hong said she brought the papers to him. Mr. Kim explained that the sound he heard was actually from his TV. He then saw the gift that Hong gave him on the occasion of his retirement. Assistant Hong walked in the elevator and read that Jai Yu paid ransom. She remembered his scream earlier. Great! 80 billion. She also recalled his strange expression. So she called on San right away. But he said he would call back later. Mr. Kim showed up all of a sudden and asked what was wrong with her. He was also present at the hospital emergency room afterward, but he tried to avoid on San. He saw Assistant Hong and remembered how he pushed her car into the river. It was the truth of her accident. He wanted to make sure that she wouldn't expose him. It took him so long to fool Jai Yu for the money. He also took the black box in her car. Right after that, he planned to escape. When Jai Yu, An San, and Chai Wun came to his home, he already arrived in another country. He finally picked up An San's call. Grabbing the phone, Jai Yu asked Kim if he really blackmailed her for money. Kim screamed at Jai Yu, you, an impersonal donor. If it wasn't you, my wife would have lived longer. Jai Yu said he was the one who asked for an operation. Mr. Kim then turned off his phone. Jai Yu then asked for Sina Jay's help. Please process exit ban for Professor Kim. However, he seemed to be abroad. The Prime Minister agreed to help Jai Yu. Chai Wun took some stuff from his car. He used it to open Mr. Kim's door. They entered Mr. Kim's house and figured out that he used another phone to reroute the calls. He also left the staff card to sidetrack them. Jai Yu received notification from the subordinate of the Prime Minister. Mr. Kim left for Vietnam at 9 a.m. This morning, however, he disappeared as soon as landing off. Hanging up the phone, Jai Yu reminisced about when Kim insisted her on an operation for his wife who got last stage cancer. Even though the research wasn't completed yet, he still wanted to try it. Jai Yu remembered Professor Kim's reproach. If it wasn't you, my wife would have lived longer, which gave Jai Yu a headache. Chai Wun stopped the car as he saw how tense she was. Jai Yu admired the natural scene to calm herself down. Chai Wun wrapped a scarf around her body to keep warm. When they returned to the car, she told him to find Mr. Kim at all cost. Before he got a new passport in Vietnam, or else they could never find him. Jai Yu ordered the AI assistant to ask their representative in Vietnam to ask for the help of Vietnamese police. At this time, Chai Wun got the approval of the prison visit. Chai Wun visited the man who was sentenced as the bomber. He was on the battlefield with Chai Wun. Together, they taught the kids at the refugee camp. 
Chai Woon asked him about the real culprit. Soldiers like Chai Woon didn't know that the president was coming. How did the bomber know to bomb up? Chai Woon wondered, you're not the culprit, right? But he still admitted to be the culprit. Chai Woon showed him the photo of a kid at the refugee camp and said, you took the kids inside because you knew about the bombing. These are the children that you had raised and educated. Do you have any memories of Jai Yu? The bomber shook his head and burst out crying. It was a scary memory for him. He stood up and said everything ended before leaving. Chai Woon remembered former president's order, win Jai Yu's trust. He then met the experts who helped people illegally travel abroad. They ran away as they thought Chai Woon was a cop. Chai Woon ran after them. He was led to the place of their accomplices who were ready to fight with weapons. When the leader appeared, Chai Woon said he just wanted to find a man. When Chai Woon was taking something from his pocket, the leader ordered to attack. Chai Woon stepped backwards to the dark and challenged them to move towards. He knocked each of them down. He captured a guy, asked him to take a paper from Chai Woon's pocket. Reading the paper, the leader halted the attack. Chai Woon released the dude and told the leader, the man in the photo named Sin Gu, who came to Vietnam this morning, find him and tell me where he is. You have your men in Vietnam, right? The leader asked for 30 million of payment. Chai Woon agreed and left. The group of gangsters began to find the man. The next day was the New Year's Eve party. Held by US Embassy in Korea, Chai Woon and bodyguard Kim escorted Jai Yu there. Chai Woon noticed the presence of Chairman Lee, who was also on the battlefield during the bombing. Chairman Park of Sunda Group congratulated Chai Woon for his new job. And he was also present at the battlefield. Chai Yu was talking to Chairman Han. Both of them were on the battlefield when the attack occurred. Prime Minister Sienna J came and greeted his father, Chairman CEO of Dusan Group. After that, Chairman CEO asked for a private talk with Jai Yu. Chai Woon escorted her into the room to meet the chairman. However, all the bodyguards and lawyer John had to wait outside. Chai Woon remembered walking with crutches to Lee Mungyu's room and apologizing him. When Lee asked about his bodyguard, Chai Woon said he passed away. Then Chai Woon whispered to Lee, When did you tell the others about the visit? At this moment, Chairman Seo, son in law of President Lee, entered. He scolded Chai Woon for not keeping the president safe. Sienna J promptly stopped him from slapping Chai Woon. Chai Woon got an important message. Chairman CEO wanted Jai Yu to sell BF to him for 32,000 billion. You only need to hand over the lab and key technology. Other subsidiary companies are still yours. If you agree, you can enjoy your life to the utmost from now on. You know well that cultured meat would be a phenomenon soon. There would be a fierce competition. My Dusan group faced many similar difficulties. But were able to endure because we had many subsidiaries. Can your company overcome the coming dark era? This is the right time to take my proposal. Jai Yu replied, give me more time to think. I'll answer you later. When Jai Yu walked out, lawyer John said Chai Woon had another fish to fry. Chairman Seo questioned his son, who was the prime minister. Is Jai Yu's bodyguard the one we met at former president's sick room? Why did he choose him to spy on Jai Yu? Was it your grandfather who made this decision? Sienna Jay said, I think he haven't won her trust yet. Chairman Seo told the PM to visit his grandfather more often. Jai Yu thought about Chairman Seo's offer. She could do whatever she wanted with that money. No need to meet up with investors anymore. When Jai Yu returned to the company, An San reported to her. Assistant Hong just woke up. Jai Yu asked An San if we sell the technology to produce cultured meat and keep our facilities from the purchaser. Chairman CEO made this proposal. He will soon discover our intangible assets, right? An San asked her about his conditions. At that time, she received a photo from Professor Kim. John got the news that he had been to Cambodia and got a Thailand passport. He chose a new name for himself. Jai Yu immediately called and asked lawyer John to verify whether he took the name Song Chai. Prime Minister Sienna Jay also received the report. Professor Kim was flying to France from the new name Song Chai. 
Professor Kim was enjoying himself like a true king in the plane. His son kept texting him. But Kim passed away. Chai Wun reported to Jia Yu. That he relied on luck to find the professor's information, Jia Yu gave Chai Wun a card to access to her AI assistant. Knowing she was doubting him, Chai Wun wondered what he did wrong. Jia Yu said, I know you don't rely on luck. You appeared when the accident happened. You also left Sunga Group right before I looked for a new bodyguard. He also discovered that someone in my company impersonated Citizenx. We both were on the battlefield five years ago. And now, you got those photos. How can a bodyguard always have everything I need? How did you get that photo? Chai Wung gave her back the staff card. He asked for her final decision. Chai Wung handed over the photo of Kim and explained. I found the experts in illegal entry and hired them to find Professor Kim. Chai Yu wondered why he didn't ask for her money to pay them. Chai Wun thought he shouldn't do that. Chai Yu required her lawyer to pay Chai Wun back. Then, she put on his wrist with a watch attached with a staff card. At this time, the AI assistant informed her that Minister of Bureau of Information sent a message. Singu passed away on the flight to France, probably due to acute myocardial infarction. Chai Yu trembled, she couldn't hold the cup of coffee tight. Assistant Hong heard about his death when being discharged from the hospital. She wondered if Jiayu took his life for stealing her money. The reporters surrounded Jiayu asking her about Kim's death. Chairman Seo heard the news. Crowds of people protesting against BF began accusing Jiayu of poisoning Singu and making it like he had a heart attack because he was the one who reported about the bacteria in her cultured meat. Realizing that the crowds got stronger and fiercer, she advised Jai Yu not to come to her office in Seoul. Jai Yu wanted to go to the headquarter of BF. Chai Wun couldn't take her to the place full of protesters. Jai Yu demanded her lawyer to help her book a hotel room. At night, lawyer John announced, I can't find any hotel with a whole floor available. Most hotels are fully booked during this year-end period. So Jai Yu told Chai Wun to take her to a place. Someone was trying to break into Chai Wun's home. He was walking around there. While unlocking the door, Chai Wun arrived at home. Chai Wun checked around and saw a car parking near his home. When Jai Yu was escorted inside, the intruder climbed the wall out and drove the car away. Chai Yu let her rest in a room in his home. When he got outside, the car earlier was already gone. Chai Wun and bodyguard Kim took turns to be on the watch. Chai Yu stroked Chai Wun's cat. Chai Wun said his parents named the cat and there was his parents' home. His sister and her daughter were in America. Chai Wun asked if she was really fine. Chai Yu said she was accused of poisoning someone. Chai Wun comforted her, you're hastening the process of the world's development, and it is just a slander. I know you have nothing to do with Professor Kim's death. I'm curious about what you had done with his wife. Was it for your business? Chai Yu refused to tell him. Lawyer John also came with a huge bag with two suitcases inside. There were guns for protecting Jai Yu. The lawyer claimed, all the weapons were licensed. I will hire more bodyguards and let them stay next door. I will pay the neighbors 10 million a week to if they agree to leave immediately. Jai Yu would stay there until the end of the holiday because all the hotels were full. After that, Chai Wun guarded on the rooftop. He checked on Jai Yu's personal itinerary sent by the former president. She broke off the relationship with her family after two crises. The fireworks displayed on the sky, celebrating New Year. Chairman Seo was with many girls. He called his son, Jai Yu rejected my offer. She was staying at the ex-serviceman. How can she be that shameless? Sienna Jay wasn't happy with that. He received a photo of Jai Yu at Chai Wun's home next morning. Which made him feel quite uncomfortable. Jai Yu was going to work with Seo Hui. Prime Minister Sienna Jay asked to meet her for work. After that, the car carried Jai Yu to his residence. But when she arrived, Sienna Jay and his staff was going to leave. He told her, the armory at the police station was broken into. 
So I need to go there to check on the situation. I'll see you another time. The Prime Minister's secretary got a report on the phone. Many guns and grenades were stolen from the police station's armory. On the way home, Jayu's car was stopped by an officer. She was told that. The road was under construction, please take another way. Thus, Jayu's driver tried a different way. Which led them to a deserted forest. Chai Woon doubted the workers on the construction. All of a sudden, a black car blocked their way. They began to attack with guns. Ho Sung backed out of the way to avoid the gun attack. To keep them from fleeing, the assassin shot the wheels. Their car went out of control and crashed into a tree. Chai Woon got out of the car and took down those who were approaching. Then he took Jai Yu to run for their lives. Jai Yu commanded her AI assistant to call the police and ran away with Ho Sung. Chai Woon gave them covering fire. Four of them hid themselves behind the rocks. The gunshots brought back the memories of the bombing in her sister's death. Chai Woon consoled her, no one will get hurt, I will be by your side. When Chai Woon's gun ran out of bullets, smoke bombs were thrown towards them, grabbing the chance, Chai Woon attacked the assassins. Before he could throw a grenade, he got shot twice. He fell down. Chai Yu lifted his arm. He still pulled the trigger to take down one more attacker, on San led a flying squad there. They searched for the victims. The bodyguard got a shot in his arm when scoping for a gun. An attacker overpowered Seo Hui as soon as he picked up a gun. However, the attacker was knocked down by the flying squad. Before then, the virtual assistant activated the alarm system at the lab. As the guns were fired from a distance of 2 kilometers, on San checked on all the CCTV around the area. We found Jayu's car on the camera. He used drones to find them from the above of the forest. They saw the assassins attacking Jayu. Those smoke bombs were. Chai Woon was taken in BF's ambulance. In car following the ambulance, Jayu ordered her AI assistant activate the basement of the headquarter. Both of the cars headed to BF's headquarter. Chai Woon was put on the stretcher. Only Jai Yu, An San, and Seo Hui could take injured Chai Woon inside. They took him to a secret room behind a secret door. They took off his shirt to heal the wound. Three of them stood aside, watching the robot carried out the treatment. Light on, the condition of Chai Woon's organs was displayed on the screen. Assistant Hong also entered this room and said, We're not ready for this yet. What if it gives him a gangrene? An San wanted to use the tissue culture technique as a clinical trial. Jai Yu believed it would be their first success. Sian and Jay was also leaving the police station. He reported to the president that 8 of 13 attackers lost their lives. They took the police's guns to carry out the attack. One person from BF was injured, and when rescuers arrived, they said he might be died from blood loss. The bullets were also removed from Chai Wun's body. And the process of transplanting cell culture plants has also begun, when the needles punctured his body. Acute rejection happened. During coma, Chai Won remembered when he saw his sister and niece off. And the bombing on the battlefield. AI assistant announced that his left cochlear nerve was damaged up to 60%. It was the damage caused by the bomb explosion. That was why he could no longer be a soldier. They all were stunned seeing their technology activated for the first time. The wounds on his body were regenerated and healed very quickly. A while later, the PM called to inquire after Jai Yu. He said the police would arrive in the next five minutes. Jai Yu left the basement and encountered lawyer John. She told John to tell the police that her bodyguard had been taken to the hospital. Lawyer John was very curious about what was happening, because an employee told her that Jai Yu came straight to the basement. Jai Yu got into a room, ordered her AI assistant to lock the door, and lay on the ground. Her mind was blown with scary sounds. After that, she returned to the secret room and informed on San. I'll be here tonight because the owner of the house where I'm staying is also here. A moment later, she suddenly remembered Chai Wun's cat. The former president failed to reach Chai Wun on the phone. When Ho Sun got out of the hospital, he was surrounded by the reporters. One of the surviving attackers claimed that dope sellers paid them to attack her. 
The media also suspected that the South American organization was behind this. They were willing to pay for someone who could take her life. The sellers promised to give them the right to distribute dope in Korea. That was the reason why they stole the guns and carried out an attack. None of BF's staff died. Prime Minister Sienna J watched the news. And then, his father called him. Chairman CEO said that if BF successfully saved Chai Woon's life, it was the right time to act. Thanks to your plan, we could see what was coming up. The Prime Minister affirmed, a politician can't set up such an attack. Do you think I carried out an attack to find out her secret? The following day, Jai Yu held a meeting with all the leaders of foreign branches. They discussed to bring cultured meat into the hardest to please markets. As soon as the meeting ended, An San came to the basement. He observed Chai Woon's damaged ear. A group of bodyguards escorted Jai Yu to Chai Woon's home. Ho Sun came there first for a safety check. Jai Yu came to visit the cat. The cat's corner was completely clean. Chai Woon prepared enough food for her for days. Outside there, the lawyer and bodyguard wondered where Chai Woon was. Chai Woon woke up in a box. And An San was sleeping on the table. He pressed a button and the box opened. He held the bullets removed from his body. Walking around the room, he saw red fluid bubbling in three big test tubes. Many blood bags were stored there. Taking a few more steps, he saw different parts of human body. He realized that his wound was almost healed. Afterwards, he called Jayu. Did you remove the bullets from my body? Why don't I see any injuries? Did you transplant pig's organs to my body? She said she transplanted nothing to his body, especially pig's organs. He could tell these are human organs. An San asked Chai Woon to go out. Chai Woon wondered if she grew human organs in a culture medium. He finally got why she was afraid of the government. He put on his suit and got out of there. He trudged down the street and took off the camera attached to his button. His ear got hurt when the phone rang. Chai Woon saw the Prime Minister at former President Lee's office. Sienna J was surprised when Chai Woon was still fine. He told Chai Woon, my grandfather is sleeping. He lost his sleep last night. I heard that a bodyguard was severely injured. You seem to recover too quick. Sienna J asked Chai Woon to tell his grandfather that. There was only one bomber who had been imprisoned. In fact, Chai Woonzer got hurt with the minor sound made by Sienna J. The Prime Minister was sure that the imprisoned bomber, who was also Chai Woon's friend, was really the culprit. He believed that Chai Woon convinced his grandfather not to believe that. Chai Woon wondered what if he found the real culprit. Sienna J promised if Chai Woon gave him all the evidences, he would deal with those who took his grandfather down. Chai Woon just left. He tested his hearing again. His right ear was fine. However, his left ear got hurt hearing the phone ringing. Chairman CEO remembered 10 years ago. He met an NBA player. He wished to have the same body as him. The player said the older he was, the weaker he got. Chairman CEO wished to be immortal. To enjoy life of the fourth richest man in the world, he determined to use his money to do that. Chairman CEO promised himself that. He would change each part of his body to be immortal. Sienu Chai came to tell his father. Chai Wun's wound seemed not to be deep so he could get recovered quickly. Chairman CEO wanted to operate his body to see which part to be transplanted, to see the difference between BF's technology and their cloning technology because he couldn't wait any longer at the age of 70. Chai Woon was like the goose laying golden eggs so they had to catch him. Chairman CEO thanked the gang from the South America who injured Chai Woon. Which led them to know that. Chai Yu and Chai Woon came to the headquarter at the same time. Lawyer John and Ho Sun were very surprised by fully recovered Chai Woon. An San opened a loud voice. It wasn't a matter for Chai Yu. Only Chai Woon reacted to it. An San said, it's 30,000 hertz, human can't hear it. I implanted the chip in your ear for testing, but I can take it out at any time. Chai Yu didn't agree with An San. She explained to Chai Woon, 
This is an electronic device, which we are researching, that can cure your ear. Why didn't you cure it before? Chai Wun said if he cured it, he couldn't walk anymore. He refused the treatment because he didn't want to be his family's burden. Without the noise-canceling device, even a low quiet sound hurt his ear. Chai Wun grabbing on San's collar, is that what you call a treatment? Chai Yu required on San to lower the sound. And she persuade Chai Wun to receive the treatment. You promised me that no one would get hurt. Keep your words. Chai Wun demanded Jai Yu not to treat him like cultured meat. He left right after that. Ho Sung encountered Chai Wun at the door. Ho Sung asked what happened to Chai Wun. However, Chai Wun was quite glacial. After Chai Wun left, Ho Sung tried to open the door but he failed. Jai Yu talked with three key personnel in her secret research and confirmed that they had succeeded in muscle culture experiments. Yet, she hoped they wouldn't put it in public yet because it wasn't fully completed. Afterwards, Jai Yu asked for a private talk with Assistant Hong. Jai Yu mentioned the failed operation performed on Professor Kim's wife. They all tried hard to apply the top-notch technology to save her. But it didn't work. Professor Kim told everyone, it's okay. You all have tried your best. He then took his wife's body home. Jai Yu didn't know that he had suppressed his anger at that time. And always waited for a chance to revenge on her. Assistant Han also said it was because he begged Jai Yu to perform the surgery. Jai Yu wondered if he took his own life on the plane. As he completed his revenge plan, Jai Yu asked Hong if any unusual event that changed him. Hong said a while after his wife's death. It was Wednesday and Singu was going to a meeting. Held by people whose family members died of cancer. She thought the weekly meeting made him feel better. A time later, he no longer went there because they all were too chicken-hearted. Assistant Hong encountered lawyer John in the lobby. The lawyer congratulated Assistant Hong for undertaking Kim's position soon. Hong's career would thrive if she could succeed in the basement research. John was worried to be fired at that time. Hong thought she had nothing to do with the basement. She also told John before leaving, every company needs legal experts. Jai Yu required Seo Hui to find the patient support center where Kim Singu came every Wednesday and to give all her bodyguards with sensor suits. Walking out of the room, Chai Wun was ready to work. Chai Yu told him to get an address from Seo Hui, where Singu met families of cancer patients. She wanted him to dig in for more information. Seo Hui told Ho Sung to choose one of these suits. Before Seo Hui gave Ho Sung the address, Chai Wun entered and said, he came to take the address then snatched the paper away. Seo Hui began to introduce about the suit's function, which was for protecting them from cut and bullets. Made from carbon fiber to help absorb heat, they wouldn't be hurt by fire. They were given the suits to do their missions. Ho Sung asked Chai Wun about the paper with the address. As Chai Wun remained silent, Ho Sung blocked his way. He hoped Chai Wun would stop being stuck up. They then dropped their bags. Seo Hui saw them fighting. He got a kick when trying to stop them. At that time, they got a notification of Jai Yu's departure. They immediately picked up their clothes. They made peace to make a good team at work. Jai Yu was very upset when her two bodyguards fighting each other. Ho Sung spoke up to break the tense atmosphere. Lawyer John told me go to the police station because you had no schedule. Jai Yu told him to drive her to Sienna Jay's place. Next, she got a message from former President Lee, and she still met the Prime Minister first. Chai Wu needed to go to the hospital for a checkup. The Prime Minister was pitching a tent indoor. Sienna Jay told her he would be here when he wanted to be alone. They talked together like it was a picnic. The Prime Minister was very hospitable to Jai Yu. Jai Yu was as cold as ice. Sienna J mentioned the South American gang who attacked her. She wondered why they could attack at the right time when being half a world away. She believed they had someone in Korea get her company. Sienna J thought they spread the rumor that he was the schemer. Jai Yu made an excuse to leave. The former president was hospitalized. Chai Wu visited him in a white blouse. Everyone else went out, leaving him alone to talk with Lee Mun Gyu. Chai Wun had a question, 
Why did they accept me as a bodyguard? Did you have any influence on that or was it your son-in-law who did it? The former president said his daughter had divorced him. Chai Won wondered if it was Sian Uj. The former president said it was his own decision. Chai Won told Lee, please don't tell Sian Uj I had visited you. Maybe someone prompted Professor Kim to help me get a job at BF. Then shut his mouth forever. Chai Won returned just in time when Jai Yu walked out. Chairman Seo gave his son a scolding. For privately meeting Jai Yu. She's the one who stayed at her bodyguard's home. Sienna Jay wished his father not to interfere with his affair. Cher Seo remembered Sienna Jay's uncomfortable gaze. When Jai Yu talked to another man at the year end party. At night, Jai Yu freaked out when hearing footsteps. She felt relieved when it was Chai Woon who was behind the door. Chai Woon then told Jai Yu. On San let me know about the birth of BF. When they both were students, they witnessed how pigs were burnt during classical swine fever. And Professor Kim was the one who took both of us there to do the epidemiological survey. After that, On San and Jai Yu left the university. Coming back after two semesters, she said she would turn human into supreme rulers. She didn't want humans to continue to depend on living animals and plants for survival anymore. The old food chain should be cut off and a new food source would be born. People thought we did this just for the money. If so, she would have sold this company to live a leisure life. You just accused her who saved your life. Jai Yu revealed another reason why she founded BF. I witnessed my twin sister in pain on the sickbed. She suffered a loss of protein in the brain due to mad cow disease. I wished I hadn't cremated her body. If I had buried her, I could have brought her back to life with transplanted organs. Sitting next to each other for a while, Chai Wung posed a question, is your ultimate goal to turn people into immortals? By replacing their weakening organs. Chai Yu was honest, I know human being can't be immortal, but if there's a way to keep them away from pain until their last breath. That's why I've worked hard to perfect this cutting edge technology. At that time, poor people can also use this technology, as the price will be cheaper and cheaper. Afterwards, he also thanked Jai Yu for saving his life. Jai Yu was grateful to Chai Woon as he tried to protect her. Next morning, Ho Sung and Chai Woon came to the social welfare center. And this was also the place where Professor Kim had often visited before, to meet those whose family members died of cancer. Ho Sung pretended to be Kim's son who returned to the country for his father's funeral, and introduced Chai Woon as his uncle to the manager. Ho Sung asked who was the closet to Kim there. The manager said that Professor Kim often talked to a man with a scar on his face. When Ho Sung asked about this man's phone number, the manager refused to reveal it. Chai Won raised his voice at Ho Sung, it's your fault. You didn't visit him often. Ho Sung responded, you don't care for your brother, though you guys lived near each other. Then he knelt down and asked the manager, please give me his phone number. I want to know how my father felt when he was still alive. Finally, they got the address of a man named Min Jong. However, it was a logistic company in fact. Chai Won saw a suspicious car parking near the company. Getting in the car, Chai Won told Ho Sun that he had seen that car parking near his home. On the night when Jai Yu came, Min Jong drove his car away. Chai Won instantly followed him up. Reaching an intersection, Song Min realized he got a company. The running car sped up to run away. The traffic police followed these two cars of overspeeding. Song Min immediately steered the car into an alley. Chai Won and Ho Sung closely followed the target. When a truck blocked the way, Min Jong opened the car door to run away. The two bodyguards took different ways to chase. A moment later, Min Jong attacked Ho Sung from nowhere. Shoving Ho Sung to the ground, Min Jong whipped out a knife. But he couldn't cut Ho Sung's suit. Ho Sung took off his coat for a fair fight. As a result, he was stabbed after a few times overpowering the rival. Ho Sung collapsed. Chai Wong constantly sought for them. He took off the noise-canceling device and heard Min Jong. A bodyguard of a big corp can't beat a mercenary like me, ha. Huh? Chai Wong found Ho Sung with full of blood on the road. Before falling in a coma, Ho Sung said, the scar. 
Chai Wun intended to run after Min Zhang but he was captured by the police. Despite Chai Wun said the culprit just left the scene, the police didn't buy into him. Suddenly, the cells in his body began to rise, allowing him to break off handcuffs and threw an officer backward. Still, he surrendered and the noise-canceling device fell off. Lawyer John reported to Jai Yu. One of our bodyguards was killed. Another bodyguard was arrested at the scene because he was the suspect. Lawyer John got in her car and called Chairman CO. CO said the late one was not Chai Woon. John asked CO, have you contacted Min Zhang? I need to flee. Jai Yu will know I'm the one who told the culprit about the destination of her bodyguards. CO ordered her to stay still. She has no evidence to suspect you, so just stay there and report everything to me. Min Zhang parked the earlier car in a garage. Then he blew up the whole garage. While preparing all his belongings to escape, he received a phone call from CO, but he didn't pick up the phone and it turned out the scar on his face was fake. When Chairman CO's men came to catch him, he also disguised himself as a woman and successfully escaped. Chairman CO requested his son to find Min Zhang before the cops. Prime Minister Song connected with the chief of the police department. He learned that the officers caught the other bodyguard. So they lost the trace of the culprit. The police sent Sian Uje a video in which Chai Wun threw an officer in the air. The prime minister seemed very excited and whispered to himself, you make my dream come true, Jai Yu. In detention room, Chai Wun tried to remember why the culprit knew he was heading the, to the welfare center. Earlier in the morning, Chai Wun was in the toilet. Ho Sung asked him to get there with him because Jai Yu had no schedule. And he often asked lawyer John about Jai Yu's schedule. Afterwards, the police led him out to see Jai Yu. And they were allowed to have a private talk. Jai Yu told him, we failed to save Ho Sung's life. I shouldn't have sent you to there, and you wouldn't have become a suspect. Chai Wun wasn't released yet as he attacked an officer. Chai Wun told Jai Yu that his body turned suddenly red hot. He didn't know why he was way too powerful. Together, they arranged the information. The perpetrator disguised himself as a member of the group and gave a fake address. When they headed out to the welfare center, only two of them knew and no one around heard them. Jai Yu said assistant Hong let her know about the welfare center. Seo Hui found the address of the welfare center. If assistant Hong was a spy, she wouldn't have told Jai Yu about that center. It might be Seo Hui. Chai Wun heard the culprit admitted to be a mercenary. Someone hired him to approach and entice Singu to attack BF. That means someone caused his death. When Jai Yu left, Chai Wun demanded to whisper to her ear. He whispered something to her and went back to the detention room. Jai Yu put on her glasses. Now the police department had asked for a talk with Jai Yu. He let her watch the video of the culprit's car. On San could also watch it from BF. Her asked the AI assistant to find the traces of the car before Ho Sung's death, before Ho Sung passed away. After all, the culprit's face was seen on the CCTV. After compiling the footage, his face was recognized. The glasses were removed. After that, his information was also listed. Jai Yu requested to see the photos of the scene. The head said they were searching for the car which he drove away. An San ordered the AI assistant to find an exploded car, or the one sank into the river after 11 am this morning. As soon as Jai Yu walked out of there, An San said there was an exploded car at a garage. Jai Yu revealed it to the police. Her information amazed the police department head. She also gave them the look of the culprit. Chai Wung was released from detention. Making a call to Jai Yu, he found out that she wasn't the one whom got him out of there. At this time, a group of bodyguards appeared and took Chai Wung in the car. Jai Yu found the current position of Chai Wung with the help of her AI assistant. Chai Wung was in a room and then appeared the prime minister. C and J tested Chai Wun's power by throwing a knife towards Chai Wun. He wondered if Chai Wun throw an officer into the air. Chai Wun explained it was all thanks to the sensor suit which BF gave him. It strengthened a man's power. Chai Wun asked C and J if he knew a man named Ji Ho. His family left the battlefield with an immigration visa shortly after the explosion. 
They were enjoying a comfortable life abroad. It was also Sienna J who closed the case by convicting someone of bombing. How could a terrorist's family get a visa to leave the country? Chai Wong queried whether it was Sienna J's scheme to harm President Lee, because Lee wanted to close BF, a company that Sienna J was very interested in. If it wasn't Sienna J, there would have been someone who related to him, but not a tie blood with Lee. As Chairman CEO divorced his wife right after the explosion, Sienna J failed to attack Chai Woon. Chai Woon then took off his coat for a fair fight with the Prime Minister. He gave Sienna J a bloody nose. Sienna J stopped bleeding with a towel and groped for his medicines. Chai Woon also realized he had hemophilia. After his blood stopped bleeding, Sienna J chased Chai Woon out of there. Chai Yu also came there to see the Prime Minister. She saw Chai Woon getting out and the mess inside. Chai Woon left to make room for them to talk. Sienna J wondered if she came to protect her secret. Have you found a way to prolong life and succeed in cultured organs? Chai Yu admitted her success. But if Sienna J wanted to see the result, mend the law on bioethics. It was for commercializing human organ transplant. And human being wouldn't be in pain any longer. The Prime Minister felt dissatisfied because he didn't want to cure the whole humanity. Humans will continue to reproduce, but natural resources are limited. Chai Yu declared, I'll create an equal future for everyone. Do you think only high-ranking and powerful people like you don't have to experience illness and death? Seeing Jay refuted, if human organs are affordable. The longer people live, the poorer they got. We only prolong their pain. And rich people will bear their flame of indignation. Chai Wong were listening to their talk from outside. Chai Yu considered it was a revolution when everyone could afford those. So if Sienna J enjoyed it alone, he would be a mutant. Sienna J didn't care if he would become a mutant. He was willing to be her experiment. Or he would dissect her first successful experimenter. As he had the right to seize BF's technology. And he wanted her to take the chance instead of losing everything and regretting. Chai Yu knew about his true colors and left there. Sienna J ordered his bodyguard to do something. Chai Yu drove the car by herself and claimed that lawyer John was the spy. Earlier when Chai Woon whispered to Jai Yu. Ho Sun said lawyer John knew they were heading to the welfare center. Chai Yu texted on San that lawyer John was the betrayer. On San checked on the camera. Ho Sun did reveal to the lawyer about his visit to the welfare center. On San told the lawyer that he had found the culprit's address. So she immediately went to the bathroom and texted her sister. At that time, On San broke the door and caught her. But they couldn't find the one whom she contacted. The four interrogated her about the culprit whom she saved as sister. What was wrong that made her text her urgently? John blamed Jai Yu for making her quit her old job. Seo Hui queried whether she was a mistress of Chairman Seo or Sienna J. She cried out loud and acted as a victim. You are illegally detaining me. Don't forget that I'm a lawyer. Chai Wun stopped Jai Yu from slapping John. He told John, you put me on the list of applicants for Jai Yu's bodyguards. Sienna J sent me here not for finding the culprit who hurt his grandfather. He is using his grandfather to swallow up BF. However, he has no plan to protect his spy. Who took Ho Sun's life? And since when have you worked for him? Lawyer John begged Jai Yu to save her life. Jai Yu also tried to stop Chai Woon. John reminded Jai Yu of Chai Woon's confession. That Chai Woon was the spy. Seo Hui tied John up. Jai Yu wanted to hear Chai Woon's explanation. Meantime, Prime Minister's bodyguard was mobilizing a team of hackers to hack into his BF's security system. Chai Woon admitted that he came there for finding out whether or not she was the schemer of the bombing. Chai Yu immediately remembered when Chai Woon was in Sienna J's room. She thought he was in league together with Sienna J. What did you tell him? You're the worst. Chai Woon claimed, I don't work for him. I didn't know what you had been through or dreamt of. I applied for being your bodyguard on purpose. But I knew nothing about ransomware. Maybe the Prime Minister knew I had knowledge about it so he pulled me into his plan. But I never gave him any information. My only one goal is to find out if my comrades lost their lives due to one of this country's leader. But I haven't found anything here. Can you give me one last chance to catch the one who took Ho Sun's life? 
I will return to the welfare center for an investigation, however, Jiayu decided to fire him. On San and Seal, we used technology to read John's thoughts. He only thought of the deaths of Hosung and the cattle farm owner. But she tried to resist not thinking about it anymore, she bit Seo Hui when he came close, her memories of the man who fell on Jiayu's car became clear. When Jiayu came back, John threatened to report to the police that she was tortured. Yet, Jiayu reported John's missing to the police. Because you were a spy trying to run away from BF, everyone would find out that you were a spy sent by Chairman Seo. On San told John, you know how many freezers we have here, in this building with a complicated structure, they would feed her three meals a day until she admitted it. They wouldn't take her life. An San asked Jiayu about the other spy. Jiayu told An San about Chai Woon's confession. In the meantime, Chai Woon was seeing the welfare center's manager. At night, Jiayu came to Chai Woon's house. A real estate agent came and asked if this house had been sold. The director went into the house and packed it up. She remembered the conversation between Chai Woon and Ho Sung a few days ago. Chai Woon was selling this house to pay for his niece's tuition fee. She was studying elementary school in America. Chai Yu also joined the conversation. My family could send only one child to study abroad. Chai Woon said his niece was allergic to milk. She was hospitalized many times when she lived in Korea, because most of Korean food and beverages are dairy products. American people have different allergies. A friend of his niece was even allergic to water. Since when she moved to America, she hadn't been hospitalized even once, that was why he tried hard to let her live there. Back then, Ho Sung also wished for a full family. But he departed this world at the age of 26. What about his girlfriend? An San visited Ho Sung's funeral and asked Chai Woon, does Jai Yu look like a terrorist? Chai Woon told on San Professor Kim seemed to be brainwashed, in a short time by the one who took Ho Sun's life. The manager of the welfare center told me Singu came there just a few times. And this guy always tried to approach Kim. Since then, they met at a cafe and no longer went to the gathering. An San believed John told that guy. To find Professor Kim at that welfare center, he even burned a neighborhood to destroy a car. Instead of burning a car in an empty field. Do you ever wonder why they could put many dynamite on the battlefield? An San asked Chai Woon before paying tribute to Ho Sung. Next day at the lab, An San remembered. Seeing the woman in John's memory somewhere. An San fed John with gruel. However, she still shut her mouth. She tried to flirt with An San. I tried to hide my feelings when working with you. But you only keep your eyes on Chai Yu. Don't you realize my feelings? And what she revealed to Dusan Group. What information have you revealed to the Dawson Group? She then struggled with the tie and explained many things. An San put away her food and went out. A while later, the lawyer took the spoon that Oh San left. And sharpen it. Jiayu thought of Sienu Jay's warning. You will lose everything. Jiayu asked her AI assistant to total up the value of BF and Dusan Group. Her company's value was one-fifth compared to the Dusan. She decided to do something to avoid being swallowed up by Dusan. The following day, many staff of BF drove many cars to different places under request. It was for bridge broadcasting nationwide. At night, her 3D image was displayed everywhere. She announced, BF is carrying out a secret project. Currently in 2025, we have succeeded in culturing muscle fibers, heart, liver, kidneys, lungs, pancreas, stomach, and small intestine. It can be said to be all organs in the human body except the brain. However, we are looking for volunteers to conduct clinical trials. These are people who are currently suffering from late-stage cancer and incurable diseases. The first period includes 60 patients, and the next one includes 150. However, there is a painful truth. Two years ago we did a clinical trial for a late-stage cancer patient and it failed. So this time I will perform it on volunteers. An San got mad hearing her streaming and rushed to find Jiayu. BF's cell culture technology is currently the highest peak that modern humans can achieve. 
Watching her pitch, former president touches gammy legs. She promised a world without disease. Prime Minister was on TV to object her announcement. He claimed that BF was using people's health as a bait for promoting their products. On San drove his car finding for Jayu, as he remembered who the woman in John's memory was. She was a wife of the farmer who fell on top of Jayu's car. He asked the AI assistant to search for the late farmer's address. Chai Woon talked to former president. Although your visit was a surprise, you must have planned it in advance. Have you ever told your daughter about that? Jai Yu isn't the schemer of the bombing so I want to approach the next target. So, I want to see your daughter, ex-wife of Chairman CEO. Former president told him to go out. On the way out, he pretended to lace his shoe to hear Lee's phone call. Chai Woon searched for the position of Chairman CEO's ex-wife. Then he stopped the car carrying this woman. He told Sienna Jay's mother. I want to talk to you about a request made by the Prime Minister. The lady let him in. Sitting in the front seat, Chai Woon posed a question. Back then, your father told you about his visit to the battlefield, right? Maybe you let your ex-husband know about it. Your unwitting action caused the death of many people. Did you divorce your husband when knowing he was the schemer? The lady wondered if he took orders from her son. Chai Woon said she could call him to check it out. The lady immediately called her son and asked if he sent Chai Woon. Sienu Jay said, do what makes you feel comfy. You can tell him the truth. Other ministers are waiting for me. I will call you back later. Back then, the lady really wanted to divorce Chairman Seo who was a womanizer. She tried to collect the evidences of his affair. But she found no clear proof. One day when Chairman Seo was bathing, she peeped at his phone. He searched for information on dynamite. She asked Seo about that when her father got hurt by the explosion. He raised his voice, are you insane? I just wanted to know what kind of dynamite hurting your father. However, she saw the history on his phone before the bombing. She found it when trying to find the evidences of his affair. Seo claimed that all the rich men had an affair. And she was just a wife like the others. She then told Sienu Jay that his father was the schemer. The lady told Chai Woon on the phone. But she didn't remember if his search history was before or after the bombing. Chai Woon got into her car and said, Did you still care about your husband's phone when your father lost his legs? Are you afraid that your son will misunderstand you? Very few people know about that type of explosive. Only two type of people search for it. Bomber or someone who want to prevent a bombing. Finally, she admitted to see his search history before the bombing. After that, she called to say sorry to her father. Because she knew everything. Lee was so upset. On San brought a box of fruit to the sister. Of the farm owner who fell on the top of Jayu's car. She was uncomfortable when On San introduced himself as a staff from BF. She chased him away. While she was calling the police, On San spoke. One of my staff was harmed. I believe the culprit met you. She opened the door and denied to be such a person. An San showed her a photo of John but she didn't know who she was. When he saw the photo of Min Jong, she said he was a parson. An San told her he was the culprit. She looked open-mouthed at him. An San went to Min Jong's home to dig it up. Sienu Jay visited his grandfather in the hospital. His mother told him, I didn't tell your grandfather that you also knew. So don't mention it to him. Afterwards, Sienu Jay saw his grandfather. When the former president was given palliative, he mistook Sienu Jay for Chai Woon. So he told Chai Woon to cover it up. The deeper you dig into it, the filthier you'll see it. How will my grandson feel when he knew it was his father? Her mother have felt sick for it. I just want to rest in peace. C and J supposed that he should catch the one who left his legs paralyzed. When Lee closed his eyes, C and J cried and said sorry. He gave his mother a hug of comfort and left. The prisoner didn't want to see Chai Woon. So Chai Woon asked the warden to give the prisoner his note. The prisoner read the message, I know whom you should be afraid of. Finally, Ji Ho agreed to meet Chai Woon. 
Chai Woon believed he had no idea about the bombing. Same as Chai Woon, Ji Ho also felt sorrow. Ji Ho went back to the camp and confessed to be the bomber. Back then, Ji Ho was kidnapped by a group of people wearing masks. They were capturing his family. Chai Woon said, they aimed at you for your right of access to the camp. But I know you don't know who is behind that. The schemer is chairman CEO of Doosan Group. If I ensure your family's safety, will you tell me everything? Ji Ho avowed, that is my cousin. I accidentally told him where our camp was when drinking with him. That night when I returned home, my family was controlled by him. He said the person behind this is the most powerful and also the richest person in Korea. He promised my family a good life as long as I admitted to be the culprit. Chai Woon let him know he was recording their conversation, but he wouldn't use it without Ji Ho's permission. He then left the prison. Seo Hui and assistant Hong came to the lab to wake John up. However, she stopped breathing. The virtual assistant reported that she had stopped breathing for 4 minutes and 16 seconds, so they untied John. It was actually her acting because she was a professional diver. John used a sharpened spoon to overpower assistant Hong. She ordered Hong to drive the car. Hong had no choice but drive it away. When Seo Hui came close, John kicked Hong off the car and drove away. Seo Hui ordered AI assistant to close the gate. And the door was able to slam down before the car got out of there. John lost consciousness but her pulse was still beating. The reporters were surrounding BF's headquarter. To broadcast about Jiu's promise. On San made an announcement. We won't perform the transplant. The reporters encircled him. On San confirmed. We succeeded in cultured human organs, and we are using AI technology to provide the most accurate support for transplants, but I do not allow CEO Yun to replace all the organs in the body, I'm her long-term friend. Since the age of 20, she have tried to create a world where people would stop eating animal, so we have successfully created cultured meat. CEO Yun is important for BF and human beings, so we will not conduct experiments on her. An San threatened Jai Yu that he would quit his job if she experimented on herself. Also, he told her about the one who took Ho Sun's life. His name is Sun Won, 39 years old. The police went to his house to collect his fingerprints, but another face was on his ID. At this time, Chai Woon came in. Aside from Professor Kim, another person was also brainwashed. It was the owner of the livestock farm who fell from Jai Yu's car. He disguised as a parson to approach the farmer, and kept telling him that the government was hopeless. Preventing Jiu was farmer's responsibility. That was Doosan Group who manipulated them. Chai Woon disclosed that Chairman Seo was the schemer of the bombing. Seanu J wanted to revenge on his grandfather's behalf. He clearly knew that I met his mother. So he let her tell me everything. Chairman Seo searched for the explosives on the internet two months before the bombing. Jai Yu and An San wondered why Sianu J wanted to tell them that his father was the schemer of the bombing. Jai Yu was invited to join the visit a week before the departure. In fact, the slot wasn't for her at first. It was very possible that Chairman Seo had interfered to make it mine, so they should fight against Doosan. Jai Yu told An San to prove that lawyer John was a spy sent by Doosan. We need to find evidence to prove that Chairman Seo tipped the culprit the wink, which caused the death of Ho Sung. In the course of their conversation, An San was noticed that John escaped. Chai Woon had a chance to talk to Jai Yu alone. He asked her to help find Ji Ho's cousin, who was in Dubai with his family. Jai Yu would sponsor a trip to Dubai to find him. Chai Woon wanted her not to experiment on herself until he came back. Jai Yu just diverted the conversation. In the end, she promised him that. Sianu Chai told his father that the police found his henchman's identity. Chairman Seo grew cross. He asked Sianu Jai to catch him in every way. He was concerned about Jai Yu's statements. If they succeeded, they would have dominated the worldwide market and surpass his company. That would be an extremely lucrative market. Sianu Jai promised to catch Yun Jai Yu. On San visited lawyer John. He blamed Seo Hui for being careless. Seo Hui wondered how she got a sharp spoon as a weapon. 
On San remembered it was him who left the spoon there. So he was upset because it was his fault. Chairman Seo couldn't reach John, who was his mistress, on the phone. He couldn't know where she was. The next day, Chai Woon boarded the flight to go to Dubai. At this time, Prime Minister spoke to the press. If CEO Ian continues to carry out illegal testing, we will examine BF and arrest her. Watching TV, Jai Yu decided to carry out the experiment. Yet, she remembered what Chai Woon said. All the top doctors in the field were invited to BF's headquarter by Jai Yu. An San scolded Seo Hui for not preventing Jai Yu. Seo Hui claimed it would be a new achievement in humanity's biotechnology industry. Afterwards, he came to see Jai Yu. She wondered if there was a way to fake John's voice. Based on the orders she gave to the AI assistant, Seo Hui thought he could do it. At this time, Prime Minister's hackers also successfully accessed to BF's security system. Sianu Chai received the report about Chai Woon's flight to Dubai. Next, he picked up a phone call. His hackers had fooled BF by disguising the new firewall system, so they hadn't realized it yet. After that, Sianu Chai called a minister to examine BF's headquarters immediately. At this time, all the experts went down to the basement and contemplating the technology to detect all kinds of diseases created by BF. Seo Hui said he needed them to provide all the information and experiences they had to help AI perform flawless surgeries. Doctors said they needed a long time to synthesize it all. CEO June would experiment on herself once the technology was perfectly completed, as she was trying to avoid any mistakes without any intention of stealing their knowledge. At this time, An San was typing his resignation. Jai Yu asked him for the culprit's phone number. As he didn't pick up the phone, Jai Yu sent him a message. Come to see me if you want to live. An San didn't believe that he would come to see her. Jai Yu thought Du San was hiding him. But when they told John that the culprit was under arrest, she immediately texted Du San. That means they didn't know where he was and they were also finding for him. Hiding in the forest, Sun Wu heard her voice message. She asked him to meet her if he wanted to live. The next morning, Dusan Group's bodyguards also came to the forest, but there was no one in the tent. Sun Wu ran away and remembered her message. Will Dusan Group spare your life? He reached his car but the wheels were flat. He pretended to surrender and then fought with two bodyguards who were looking for him. Even though he was injured, he could still knock them off and left. John woke up. But she didn't recognize her mother. The AI assistant disconnected for a few seconds. Seal, we checked on the system's stability. He left as soon as hearing that John woke up. Taking the chance, hackers entered the system. On San and Seal, we went to the hospital to visit lawyer John. Sitting in her car, Jai Yu picked up Sun Wu's call. He asked her to meet him alone. An San saw Jai Yu's car change the direction. An San told her to be careful with Sun Wu. He wished Chai Woon to be there. After that, they all came to a parking lot. An San parked his car on the lower floor while Jai Yu's car went to the higher floor. An San saw a car with two gangsters inside going up. Jai Yu saw blood coming out of a car so she checked it out. Sun Wu lost his conscience. Her bodyguard smashed the window. Jai Yu wondered who did it to him. He asked her to save his life. Jai Yu told her bodyguards to take him away. The gangster in a nearby car blocked her way. By hitting her car and pushed it. Until it fell down from the rooftop. An San blocked their way out. Yet, they already escaped. Jai Yu's car was severely broken. The helicopter carried people trapped in the car back to BF. The leading surgeons gathered there to save Jai Yu's life. Even though everything was not ready yet, everyone must get to work. Prime Minister Nu Sun Wu was still alive and he was taken by BF's helicopter. So Sianu Jai decided to take action. The process of replacing Jai Yu's organs with cultured organs begun. An San received a phone call. 
the police sent a notice that they would come to examine the laboratory in a few minutes. After that, many police cars were heading to BF's headquarter. Following them was a container. Accusing illegal actions and breaching medicine law, the police entered the building to examine. Anyone who was in their way would be considered an act of opposition to people performing public duties. The opening door surprised on San. AI assistant was disconnected. The computer system in the secret room was unavailable. And the AI assistant completely turned off. A group of armed mercenaries got off the container. Chai Woon already arrived. The mercenary group broke in from the back of the headquarters, then swung down and broke in through the vent pipe. Chai Woon appeared in time and knocked down two of them. The remaining mercenaries began destroying everything and confiscating the hard drives in the lab's basement. After defeating one more man, he hid behind a ventilation pipe. The mercenary began firing continuously to search for him. Chai Woon carried one guy as a shield to shoot back the remaining guys. Chai Woon was shot. He fled inside. Chai Woon trudged over. And Seo Hui was being controlled by two guys. Chai Woon put down the gun and was knocked down by a guy behind him. They made Seo Hui lead them to the transplant room. The mercenary group asked all doctors to raise their hands and stop the surgery. Chai Woon saw Jai Yu on the operating table. Then he led these soldiers into the transplant room and saw Sun Wu lying in the sickbed. A man let them continue the surgery. Another one went to check on Sun Wu's condition and was suddenly attacked by him. Chai Woon found a chance to attack those who were restraining him. Seo Hui and a doctor fought against a man, shooting up the place. Luckily, Jai Yu wasn't shot. Sun Wu lost his life. Chai Woon tried his best to fight. Assistant Han also tried to attack a man. Chai Woon got injured, yet, he tried to beat them up. Chai Woon told Han to let go and shot the last man. Getting exhausted, Chai Woon fell to the ground. Sian and Jay was interviewed on TV. He denied that his father was the schemer of the bombing, which took his grandfather's legs. Along with countless soldiers and children in refugee camp, BF spread a false rumor. Eleven innocent lives were taken in the recent gunfight. When the reporter asked about Chai Woon's accusation made against Chairman CO. Sienna J claimed that Chai Woon had a mental trauma after the disaster. She continued asking if the armed group broke into BF. Was sent by Chairman CO. Sienna J denied it. So the reporter opened a recording. A woman who knew Chairman CO. Who was in the hospital and pretended to have amnesia. Chairman Seo asked her if he mentioned his name before his death. And whether Jai Yu was alive or not. The woman answered, I have no clue, but I'll pretend to remember nothing about Dusan. Sienna J blamed his father for being fooled. Chairman Seo begged his ex-wife. To persuade Sienna J not to treat him like that. He even threatened to take their lives if Sienna J refused to help. Former President Lee appeared and asked his daughter, did Sienna J know who took my legs? She babbled that he knew nothing. Chairman eventually realized that Sienna J knew everything about the bombing and his plan to swallow up BF. Sienna J tried to reduce his anger. Chairman CO said his grandfather never listened to him. Despite that CO helped Lee become the president. I won't let anyone take anything away from me. Sienna J said, you promised to give me everything. When you keep your words, I'll let you live forever. Being in prison won't be a matter. Take responsible for everything, including the gunfight at BF. He then burst out laughing awkwardly. The Prime Minister began to draft a document to apologize to the public. The investigation committee in Adugan sent me the results today. They followed the money flow and discovered that my father was the one who paid the terrorist group. I feel ashamed when denying it. A thorough investigation will be conducted and I will step down as Prime Minister. I'm sorry for what my family has done. Lawyer John frequently met a psychologist to take back her memories. Seeing on San, she realized he was working at BF. Your company impersonated me and turned me into a spy in the media. I just can't remember what I have to do with you guys. On San said, we've been working together for three years. From now on, I won't follow you anymore protect yourself. Don't lose your life. 
talking to the psychologist in tears. She wished to remember everything in the past. Sianu J was the new chairman of Dusan. He checked on the hard drives he took from BF. He believed Jiayu was no longer in this world, but BF seemed to keep a secret about it. Her death actually made him sad. A team cleared the scene and took away the bodies. These bodies were used for clinical experiments. A prosecutor informed on San that the armed group who broke into BF were not police. So who did it in the end? On San confirmed that they tried their best to survive. They had a fight against the mercenaries. And on San found every way to protect Jiayu's body. When Chai Wun was dragged away, on San picked up the photos. Chai Wun had captured Ji Ho's cousin. All traces at the crime scene were cleaned up. Jiayu's voice was heard from the basement. Chai Wun opened his eyes. The end. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.